Dear students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss the Hemi blocks. Under the term hard block is understood any condition in which there is an obstacle in the conduction of the electrical impulse through the cardiac electrical conduction system. A hard block can occur anywhere in the electrical conduction system of the heart, starting at the SA node, at the sinoatrial conducting pathways, the AV junction, the bundle branches and their subdivisions. When we talk about hemiblocks or fascicular blocks, we refer to a block in the conduction of the electrical impulses through one of the subdivisions of the left bundle branch. The left bundle branch divides into three fascicles. Those are the anterior, the posterior and the small septal fascicle. The anterior and the posterior fascicle conduct impulses to the whole left ventricle and the septal fascicle is responsible for conducting the impulses to the left septal surface. How are we going to detect a fascicular block on the ACG? In normal conditions, when the conduction through the ventricular conducting system proceeds smoothly, the depolarization wave travels simultaneously through all of the fascicles at the same time. At the beginning, because the anterior and the posterior fascicle branch out almost in the opposite direction and the depolarization wave travels in opposite direction, the electrical vectors are cancelling each other out. So the initial vector of depolarization depends only on the septal fascicle. The impulse through the septal fascicle is conducted from the left side to the right side of the septum which, because of the anatomical position of the heart, is pointed downward. That's why on the ACG is going to be recorded as an initial small positive wave in the inferior leads, which are the lead 2, 3 and AVF. And because it moves in opposite direction from the lateral leads, is going to be recorded as a small Q wave in lead 1 and lead AVL. Quick recap, the depolarization wave moving to the positive electrodes gives a positive deflection on the ACG and moving away from the positive electrodes gives a negative deflection on the ACG. Ok, then the following major vector is going to be a result of the combination of the vectors of depolarization conducted through the anterior and the posterior fascicle. The net result the net vector is pointed downward and to the left, which actually corresponds to the electrical axis of the heart. Now let's see what happens when one of the fascicles is blocked. When one of them is blocked, the whole work falls on the non-blocked fascicle, so the non-blocked fascicle must spread the impulse to the whole ventricle. How are we going to detect this on the ACG? Well, now, since the impulse is conducted mainly through the non-blocked fascicle, the direction of the depolarization wave will change. Therefore, we expect a change in the main vector, which actually is a deviation in the electrical axis of the heart. And yes, the main criteria on ACG for a present hemiblock is a deviation in the electrical axis of the heart. When there is a left anterior fascicle block, the impulses to the left ventricle are spread only via the posterior fascicle. So at the beginning, the impulse travels downward, then the impulse from here must be spread to the whole left muscle mass. So now the impulse is directed upward and to the left. So the initial downward conduction in the inferior leads will be recorded as a small upward wave, small R wave, because the impulse is directed towards the positive electrodes recording from the inferior point. Then the impulse travels in the opposite direction away from the positive electrodes, which now is going to be recorded as a large negative wave, a large S wave. So 
after the small R wave, we have a large and deep S wave. Now, if we observe the conduction of the same impulse from the point of the lateral leads, lead 1 and lead AVL, we have the opposite. So, initially, the impulse moves away from the lateral leads, so we expect a small Q wave. And then the impulse is directed towards them, and therefore we expect a large R wave. As we can see, the direction of the movement of the depolarization wave shifts mainly to the left. So, we have a deviation in the net vector to the left, which is a left axis deviation. Yes, the main criterion on the ACG for a left anterior fascicle block is a left axis deviation. Also, because one fascicle is doing the whole work, we will have a slightly delayed depolarization of the whole ventricle, which is going to give a quite widened QRS complex, but never exceeding more than 0.12 seconds. Now let's see what happens when we have a left posterior fascicle block. When there is a left posterior fascicle block, we have the opposite situation. Now the depolarization wave to the left ventricle spreads only via the anterior fascicle. So at the beginning, the impulse travels upward and to the left, then the impulse from here must be spread to the rest of the muscle mass, which is now pointed downward and slightly to the right. So the initial upward conduction will be recorded as a small negative wave, a small Q wave in the inferior leads, because the impulse is directed in the opposite direction from them, and then the following downwards conduction is going to be recorded as a large positive wave, a large R wave. So we have a small Q wave followed by a large R wave. And if we observe from the point of the lateral leads, we have the opposite. Initially, the impulse travels towards them, which is going to be recorded as a positive wave, which then is followed by a large negative wave, because the impulse travels away from them. So we have a small R wave and a large S wave in the lateral leads. So according to the net direction of the depolarization wave to the right, we have a deviation in the electrical axis to the right. Also, we have a slightly delayed depolarization of the ventricle because the whole work falls on one fascicle. Therefore, we expect a slightly widened QRS complex but never exceeding more than 0.12 seconds. So again, the main criterion for left posterior fascicle block is an ACG pattern of a right axis deviation. Another thing we have to mention here is bifascicular block. Bifascicular block is a combination of a right bundle branch block and left anterior fascicle block or left posterior fascicle block. In this situation, the conduction of the impulses to the ventricles takes place only through the remaining non-blocked fascicle. The ACG will show typical features of right bundle branch block plus either left or right axis deviation. Now, in most of the cases, hemiblocks occur due to a coronary artery disease or with complete occlusion of the artery supplying the bundle branches and their subdivisions. Or better said, hemiblocks often are a result of myocardial infarction. To be able to understand this, we have to learn the anatomy of the blood system that supplies the heart and the different parts of the electrical conduction system. Okay, so the heart is supplied with blood by the left and the right coronary artery. The left coronary artery has two main branches. Those are the anterior descending artery and the left circumflex artery. The left anterior descending branch supplies with blood the right bundle branch and the anterior division of the left bundle branch. Also, the anterior descending artery supplies blood to the anterior portion of the left ventricle. Now, the right coronary artery 
supplies with blood, the AV node, the His bundle, and the posterior division or the posterior fascicle of the left bundle branch. Right coronary artery supplies the posterior portion of the left ventricle and the inferior portion of the heart. But in some cases, the inferior portion of the heart is supplied with blood from the left coronary artery. But in most cases, the right coronary artery is responsible for the inferior wall. So, an occlusion of the anterior descending artery will produce anterior wall infarction, eventually associated with left anterior fascicular hemiblock, and perhaps with right bundle branch block, depending on the location of the occlusion, giving an anterior wall infarction with bifascicular block. Now, left posterior fascicular hemiblock occurs with occlusion of the right coronary artery, so we expect posterior hemiblock with inferior myocardial infarction pattern on the ACG. And with that, I would like to end this video. I hope that it was helpful for you, and if yes, please make sure to subscribe to support me. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you again.